Hello and welcome to Commercial Audio Solutions for another product video. Today we're looking at what an impedance meter is. An impedance meter is a device for measuring loudspeaker lines on constant voltage 100 volt line PA systems. It's an essential tool for any audio installer who's putting a new system in or is measuring a line on an existing system where there might be a fault. An impedance meter is required because it sends out an AC signal at one kilohertz tone and it actually gives you a proper reading of all the loudspeakers on the line. You can't do this with a multimeter because a multimeter is just designed for measuring resistance and all you'll see is you'll end up measuring the primaries on every transformer in every loudspeaker. It won't give you a proper reading, it'll be very, very low. So an impedance meter is an essential tool. It helps you fault find systems very quickly. So I'm going to run you through the basics of how to use an impedance meter. The one we're looking at today is the TOA ZM104A, which is a popular meter that we sell. There are other ones on the market, there are some digital ones. This one's an analog one, it's very simple to use. So basically, we start off in the box, you get a pair of red and green leads, leads as you would with a multimeter. So plug those into the meter. It's essential when you first plug these in that you zero the meter on the scale. You'll notice it goes from infinity all the way through to naught ohms. There's two ways you can do this. So if we switch the meter on to times one, most of the measurements we'll be using on big 100 volt line, or even small 100 volt line systems will be using the meter on times one. The higher numbers are for measuring very, very small uh, wattages or high impedances. So we need to zero the meter first. You can either do that by connecting the two terminals together. You'll notice at the moment it doesn't go all the way to naught. Uh, this needs to be adjusted by the adjuster on here. So we just make sure that's naught. Or there's another way, you could, there's a push button on here which zeroes the meter anyway, or it, it's the equivalent of shorting the two probes together. So that's essential that you get that to naught. I've got set up here an example small system which has got a 15 watt cabinet speaker and a 20 watt projection speaker. So we know if there's no problems, the load should give you about 30 watt, five watts on that line. So we disconnect your speaker lines from the amplifier. Obviously switch the amplifier off first. Take the two wires. So brown is normally for the red and blue is for the, the common. You'll hear in a minute a tone coming through the system. So this is the one kilohertz tone that the impedance meter is putting out. You can see the reading on here is about 270 ohms. It's between 280, 260 ohms. So we'll take a note of that. One other advantage on the tone is you can actually do a walk around on the system. Uh, you can listen to every speaker on there. Obviously, if you don't hear any sound coming out of a speaker, you'll know there's a fault with that speaker. Um, if, if some of them are much louder, or there's one much louder than the other speakers on that line, and they're all in the same area, there's a potential issue with it being switched to the wrong tapping, or even to be on a low impedance tapping. So if you've got faults where amplifiers have overheated um, or gone down, then you know, it's a very useful tool for just walking around the place and seeing what speaker might be the problem on the line. Um, you can also find that if you get a line and there's nothing after about six speakers, then you know there's a, maybe a short circuit or there's a, a chopped wire somewhere. So this, this is a really handy tool for quickly finding out those reasons. Now, I was talking about the value on here at 270 ohms. Uh, this, this, this impedance reading now can be made to work out what the wattage is on the, on the line. At the end of this uh, video we'll put up a chart of impedance readings in ohms versus the number of watts on the line to do with a 100 volt line. But the basic equation is if you want to work out watts, it's 100 divided by the impedance meter reading you've taken then times by 100. So in this case it's 100 divided by 270 times 100. I'm going to just do a quick sum on that. So 
So that's giving us a reading of 37 watts, which is very close to the 35 watts we should be getting on here anyway. With regards to how accurate a reading is, you're going to be getting something 5, maybe even 10% around the accuracy so but it gives you a very good you know reading that's going to be a good guide to working out what amplifiers you need on systems if you're replacing an amplifier that's being overloaded another thing to work out is also to allow 20 percent of headroom in an amplifier so if you've got a 120 watts of load you might want an amplifier which is 150 watts just to cover you another important thing just before we go when you finish with the meter make sure you switch it off so the batteries don't run down.